Lord. So it affects the entire water column. I told you on Tuesday, tsunamis, sometimes called tidal waves, are not regular waves. Regular waves are created by wind. And you blow. And they're, they're created at the surface. And they're only at the surface. Tsunamis are created from the bottom up. The whole water column is involved. If you've got a mile deep water, you've got a whole mile deep of water, 5,000 feet of water, move. And that wave moves across the ocean as a small surface wave, but involving the entire 1,000, 5,000 feet of water. It goes by boats, they don't even feel it, okay? They're small, until they reach land. And then all of a sudden, you've got 5,000 feet of water piling up. And as they could get so big, they get so big, they got to get all that water to get big, and they suck water out of the beaches, and the water goes away at the beaches. So if the water disappears, you're in Manila, and the water goes out, what do you do? You can run like hell. High ground. Just get to 100 feet, all right? Top of the building, all right? How many times am I going to save your life? <laughs> the last time that we had an earthquake up here, was in the year 1700. <coughs> but this is a model for what it did. Because we know 12 hours later in Japan, in the year 1700, not many people were living in, the, uh, in Alaska, and they were uh, mostly Native Americans and uh, didn't have a written culture as much. But Japan, I can't read their language, but they, they have a history. They write it down. So we now know, we just, in the last, about 10 years ago, we, we figured this out. By dating of fallen trees, it all dated about 1700, in the Seattle region, and we know that Japan had a huge tidal wave that came on shore 12 hours later. That's the Cascadia earthquake. That's the big one that we haven't had since. All right, 12 hours later. So look out, Sumatra, part of Indonesia, Borneo, Java, on the edge of the Indian Ocean, rocked with a big earthquake and the water went out and they stayed out there went out there to see where it went until the waves started coming in they all died all right this part is not good so look at all the deaths here's indonesia there there is indonesia and sumatra all right there's the epicenter Thirty-two thousand people sucked to their death in indonesia along sri lanka over on the other side of the Indian Ocean, 22,000. Other parts of India, Thailand, wow, crazy. Look at that, look at that. That's a goal. And these waves go all across the ocean. And in fact, we go in and out of every ocean and go all the way across. They don't just stay in one ocean. Crazy. So here's Sumatra before. Study that. Nothing stable. Okay? Have I got your attention? <laughs> yeah. Do you just want to go back to your dorms and write poetry? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, this is not pretty. Okay, sit. So Waves have gone out, water's gone out. There's the wave coming in. They were setting up for lunch at the hotel near the beach. Waves are coming in. People are seeing it, they're running.
And I'm glad most of it was set to music <coughs> because we didn't hear the screaming that was occurring throughout all of it. Okay, that's why they did that. Good arts. So magnitude 9.3. Are you kidding? And we're worried about an 8. Wow. So there are bodies. <sighs> Man, 20, 230,000 people. <laughs> Let's go to another one. <laughs> I gotta laugh just to break it up. Um, here in the middle of China, 7.9, so one tenth of the one we just saw, 2008, <coughs> killed 40,000. Why? Right there. Because the collision of India, which started 40 million years ago, is still colliding. Look at all the earthquakes. Look at them all. It connects. <laughs> to the Indonesian subduction zone. Here's Japan, Philippines, Marianas. They're all connected. And so it was in the back part of the great collision of sea that used to be, Tethys is gone, and it rocked. Look at that. Here's some of the rescue. People being, you know, people really jump out. Initially China resisted efforts from the world community to get in and help, but finally they opened their doors and we opened our arms. He vigils from China to Belgium, praying, praying that the survivors would be found soon. Donations. <laughs> Pretty shocked. They're a makeup school in a gymnasium. <coughs> so it's kind of tough. So we've talked now a lot about divergent plate boundaries and convergent plate boundaries, and I think I have your attention. Our third kind connects offset ridges, as you learned today, <coughs> our last time. And why, why that happens is that when you have spreading on a ridge, the spreading is not equal along that ridge. So I'm a, I'm a spreading ridge. I'm spreading this way, I'm spreading this way, because there's, there's a convection cell underneath me, okay? I'm a convecting, I'm pushing that way, and I'm pushing that way. If I do it unequally, and so I'm pushing this way from the ridge. But this right arm is going faster. Then I'm going to offset the whole ridge. I'm going to offset the whole ridge. So transform happens because of unequal move movements along the ridge axis. And it shifts the ridge axis. That's it. And then you get a transform fault, also called strike <coughs> slip fault, because it's along the strike of, of the fault. But it is a plate boundary. Uh, so if you look at mid-ocean ridges in every ocean, like the seam on the baseball, they have these offsets, and that's the transforms. The East Pacific rise goes right up into the Gulf of California, moving Baja California off of Mexico. It's a ridge. It's rifting. But it's also got transform fault. So here it comes. Here's the East Pacific rise, but offset, <laughs> offset, 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 offset. And then... It all offset. Here is the San Andreas from ridge to ridge, connecting the spreading ridges of the East Pacific Rise to the spreading ridges of the Cascadia subduction zone. Spreading ridges feed subduction. Spreading ridges feed subduction. But the ridges, when they get offset, are offset by a transform fault. So that's the San Andreas. With other faults related to it. And it's got a bend in it right in there, and that's creating compression, uplifting parts of Southern California. All right, uplifting the San Gabriel Mountains. So here is L.A. I used to live right there in Pasadena. Here is where I used to teach. All right, that's the San Andreas. That's a plate boundary. That's a huge landslide that came out of the San Andreas Fault. So there's a plate boundary. This is the Pacific Plate. This is the North American Plate, and it's not fooling with us. Last time it moved in this region was 1857, and that much per year ever since is building up. When I learned I was moving away, <laughs> I said, thank you. <laughs> Hello, Boston. <laughs> now if I can just get my house there so quick enough, because L.A. and all of California and all the way up and down the West Coast are going to have big ones, all right? It just, I, know. I mean, look at this. The San Andreas has been around for 20 million years. It's moved in a big way every 100, and year, 100 or 200 years. Is it going to stop moving just because you showed up and made a prayer? What's true here? True here, what's true here is that Dr. A is trying to save your life. <coughs> Stay in Boston. <laughs> but you've got to go where your job is. 
Watch this. Here's how it's made. Subduction zone. Suddenly, the subduction zone is going down the trench. Wow. The plate motion on this side of the trench is oblique. And now the San Andreas is formed. Tanya Atwater, as a graduate student at Cornell, and now a professor of geology at UC Santa Barbara, and member of the National Academy of Sciences, explained the origin of the San Andreas Fault. Because, she said, a subduction zone went down its own trench. Created, I mean, I'm sorry, a, a rig system went down its own trench. A spreading ridge got subducted. Spreading ridge, one kind of plate boundary, went down a subduction zone, a second kind of plate boundary, and that created the third, a transform fault. Okay? Back it up. Watch this. If I can do that, one, there we go. Subduction zone. Here comes a spreading ridge. Ah, suck. 30 million years ago. Ah, it's getting longer. 20 million years ago. It's getting longer. Wow. 15 million years of getting longer. Pacific, so the motion is now oblique. That's transformed. Okay? Way back there. You see that? All right. Uh, the thing is about the San Andreas, as all faults, is that they move infrequently. But they're going to move. Look at all the movements. This is Kerry C. at Caltech. He determined how often the San Andreas fault has been moving. Uh, 1857 was the last time, and then... Before that, it was 1745, with a gap of 112 years. Before that, 1470, with a gap of 275 years. So here's all the gaps. The average gap is 160. We've been waiting 155 years. So we're approaching the average year. But if 160 is the average, has the San Andreas ever gone on the average year? True or false? No. <laughs> No, it could, have, it could have gone a long time ago. It could have gone, uh, the earliest, smallest gap is 55, so it could have gone in 1912. Or it might wait to 2082. But look at this face. Is it going to happen? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, when I moved to L.A., holy cow, first thing I did was strap my house down. You can do that, all right? When an earthquake happens, the first thing I do is I smell for natural gas. Why? Because earthquakes rupture gas lines. And you can turn off the gas lines. It's a, there's a, where your gas meter is. Turn it off. Take a wrench, there's a knob, it's there. You just rotate it 90 degrees. I'm trying to save your life. And Lisa Grant Ludwig at UC Irvine has shown actually that Kerry C was partly wrong. There even, it's even more common. Not 160, more likely to have 88. Whoa. So it's all new. We're getting better at this. Some parts of Southern California move almost monthly, offsetting just plowed beds, uh, <laughs> offsetting orange groves, Jeez. but small little offsets. The big ones happen in two areas, Southern California around LA, hello, and San Francisco. It's just stuck, constipated, all right? Uh, and yet here we are in San Bernardino, part of the L.A. region. What's wrong with this picture? Some of you are going to go out there and build housing developments and sell homes. What's wrong with this picture? It's poltergeist. <laughs> What's wrong with this picture? Yeah, it's a housing development on a plate boundary. On a plate boundary? Holy cow. Look at that. I mean, it's one thing to put it on a small fault that rarely moves. They put it on a fault that's actually a plate boundary, one of the biggest plate boundaries on Earth. This side is the Pacific plate. It goes all the way out into the ocean and all the way across the ocean to Japan. It's the world's biggest plate. On this side, it's the North America plate. It goes all the way across North America and then out into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. <coughs> Two of the world's biggest plates grinding away at each other. And you put houses on it? <laughs> And you bought a house there? And your child's outside riding a tricycle? Is Dr. A saving you? Yeah, yeah. Landers earthquake in 1992 went right through that house and knocked down a chimney inside. Whoa, there it is, right there. Look at, and when it went, there's a, the slips, the scratches on the surface, the scratches on the surface. It goes straight up. It went at an angle. You could have thrown a football if you had a football on top of the ball. 
All right, now look out. This was the last one. LA's been quiet ever since. Northridge. Scared me to death. <laughs> when this earthquake happened at 4.45 in the morning, everything was shaking. I turned on the light. I grabbed my dog so she, she wouldn't run. And there was a, a brand new six-foot mirror that we had not put into the wall yet. And I turned on the light, grabbed my dog, and that mirror came off the wall. And it went back. Dog goes, off the wall again. Oh, God. Back. I'm looking at my wife. Ugh. Off the wall. And it came down and shattered. And the last thing I saw was our cat ricocheting down the hallway, not even touching the floor. <laughs> this is all true. <laughs> oh, my God. It toppled freeways, knocked down buildings. Not that many people were killed. Most of them were killed here. About 55 died. This is a remarkable picture of bad architecture. <laughs> That's the second floor. Now where the first floor used to be. Pancake. That's the stairwell that used to go to the second floor. So it's gone. The whole first floor is gone. Okay, so look at the tumblings. I mean, this place. So we're learning a lot with every earthquake. That's what do we call the steel inside concrete? What do we call that? Rebar. Yeah, we've learned that, that to make our rebar bigger in earthquake zones. We're learning better how to make green architecture and stronger architecture. Look at that. This was <coughs> this was grad students. This was Holly. Uh, this was the apartment of one of our grad students during the North, after the Northridge earthquake. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then the fires break out. Why? Why, why are we getting fires? I mean, what destroyed San Francisco after the 1906 earthquake was fire. Broken what? Gas lines. Gas lines, all right? Look at the fires. Made more, look at all these homes are gone. Boom, boom, boom. Made more difficult because not only do you break gas lines, you break water lines. Because you got a fire, you can't put it out. There's no water. Ah! And here's a freeway that fell down. And right there is a motorcycle and a body bag of a policeman at 4.45 in the morning running into L.A. to help. He knew he would be needed to be helped. And he went right off the broken freeway. So it's sad. All right? Wow, look at that. How is it from an so here's the smoke we were just looking at. What's that? That's not smoke. What is that? Let's get closer. Look at that. It's dust. What's causing it? Landslide. Landslide. The mountains are tumbling down. The mountains go up. And they're also tumbling down. Landslide. When the Northridge earthquake hit, the first thing I did, I had to sweep up all the broken glass, settle the dog down, go look for the cat. And then I got on my bike. I said, I'm going to go. Up, I have my love mountain biking, and I went up the San Gabriel Mountains to look, and I found all these scars where rocks had come tumbling, cutting and cutting across the dirt. Down on the trail I was on, all scarred, all these places rocks had cut through. That was really stupid of me, because at 9 o'clock that morning, we had another one. <laughs> and I was still up there, oh God. So fire and smoke, look at that. Crazy. This is, this is where you, you find somebody that found God. This was before cell phones. People were driving at 4 o'clock in the morning. CB radios, CB radios are really popular. And so this truck driver here and that car there were talking on CB radio. They didn't know each other. They were just talking. And suddenly the rock, the thing starts shaking. The truck driver sees the roadbed fall away. He says, stop your car, stop your car. He stopped right there. Not knowing where he was. But that saved him. All right. So uh, Northridge earthquake was not on the San Andreas Fault. It's over here. So it's not just not just plate boundary faults, but they're related. They're all related to each other. Lots of lots of aftershocks. That's the parking structure at Cal State Northridge. We're lucky it happened at 4:45 in the morning when nobody was there. Yeah, crazy. Here's somebody else that found God. <laughs> no car was found, so this person. Kept that car upright and drove off. <laughs> oh, thank God, I love you. <laughs> Whoa. And then moving north, come out of L.A. and look at the San Andreas Fault going right across Central California, all the way to San Francisco. It's so active, it offsets streams. It's an active plate battle, all right? 
And so now coming, uh, going northward, it goes through Lake San Andreas, hence its name, into the San Francisco region. And here we are in San Francisco looking back on the ocean. There's Lake San Andreas. You see how the rocks go from brown to white? So there it is. And look at that. What, are, what is all of this? What, anybody live there? <laughs> Do you? Yeah, I know. And my wife has an aunt who lives right there, and she asked us if she, if she should have earthquake insurance. <laughs> These are housing developments right on the plate that we're doing it all over the place. We need better laws. We need you to go out, graduate from BU, and do great things. Make great laws. Become governors and presidents and congress people and, and help. It takes, it takes good laws. And it's not just the San Andreas fault. A lot of related faults all moving. It's a complex system. So here it is, Loma Prieto, 1989, 6.9. plays early in that one as well. Third World Series. Size McGram, P Wave coming in. S Wave. It's a great photo. Somebody else came to the movie with a basketball game. Somebody else, security camera and a cafeteria. Just give me a snapshot. What was happening? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Wow. I say wow well a lot, don't I? Talk about the San Gabriel Mountains created by <coughs> uplift through the bending of the San Andreas when he goes snaps trees. So here's the San Andreas and it's bending and it's causing these mountain ranges right there. Here's the base of the earth. We talked about that, but San Andreas is bent. You see how it's bent right there? And that causes compression. So, you know, if I'm straight, I'm not going to create much of a mountain range, but if I'm bent, boom. All right, it's going to go up, up you go. Fence which way you bend. Pray with me. Put your hands together. Right. If I go straight, I'm doing the straight and narrow. All right, I'm being good. I'm not going to make much of a mountain. But bend your hand to the right and move your left hand forward. Left hand forward, and you make a gap. And that causes the land to sink. That makes the Dead Sea. That makes the Salton Sea. All right, that makes Death Valley. All right, land drops. Okay, back to prayer. Let's go straight again, straight and narrow. Now, bend your hand to left. Again, left hand moving forward. Uh, uh, up you go, all right? Up you go, up. This way, always left hand forward. Can't go, I'm up. So, mountains go up, land goes down. This kind of uplift you're going to cause these mountains to go up. My favorite mountains, love those. And part of that land concludes Los Angeles. Here is Dodgers Stadium. Let's go, Red Sox, Dodgers. Stadium's right up here. It's sitting here on an anticline, we call it, on a fault that is so young it hasn't gotten to the surface yet. Wow, that's how young all this is. We call it a blind thrust because it hasn't seen sunlight yet. So young it hasn't broken all the way to the Earth's surface. That's the Pasadena Freeway. All right, earthquake prediction. Can't. Can't do it. We used to think we could. We spent millions trying to figure out a way. Animal behavior. Uh, checking out, uh, look, looking at four shocks, putting out strain gauges. It all helps. You can see lots of strain. What you really can do is probability and past history. How often it's happened. So, what is the probability? And we're working with that kind of difference. You want a job. Size missing. Probability. It's all there. Okay? And the big gaps we've already talked about. So California creeping in the southernmost Salton Sea region and Central California, but the big areas of where it's stuck. LA since 1857, San Francisco 1906. And your first job out of BU is going to be somewhere dangerous. <laughs> Watch this.
survivors down there. It's nothing short of a miracle. The Golden Gate Bridge is no more. Mr. Goldman, it's impressive. I told you I watched a movie, it made me tear up. That's good art. Obviously, not real. Somebody took a geology class <laughs> and made an incredibly realistic movie. And if you're not a little bit stunned right now, you're dead. <laughs> that was hard. Hard for me to watch it. Because when I watch those cars going off, I'm thinking people inside, parents and children, uh, uh, screaming, wow. <coughs> So a bit of humor <laughs> after the 1906 earthquake. This is the father of the Ice Age. Louis Agassiz had a statue on Stanford's campus, and he tumbled head first. And in the 1980s, the little girls sing the earthquake song. Are your parents in here? It's got to be Oh, yeah. Gonna be an earthquake. <laughs> oh, that's a hip hop. Not my fault. <laughs> oh, God. Isn't that cute? The earthquake song, sung by the little girl. All right, so go forth Thursday, Friday, tomorrow. Have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. Don't be thinking about this class if you cross Palm Avenue. No more fires. <laughs> <laughs>